Yes. <laughs> Perfect timing. Thanks. <laughs> And that, everyone, is how you botch intro music. Welcome. This is uh, February 9th, 2019. Uh, you're listening to the Pixels Get Me podcast, uh, episode 18. I don't know if I just said that. Um, but yeah, so tonight we're going to be talking about all kinds of things in the gaming, uh, tech news, new media news, and a little bit of board game news. So we're kind of dipping all over the place. Uh, we have with us uh, tonight, real quick, I'm, uh, I'm Pixels Get Me. I'm streaming over at Mixer.com. Uh, live doing the podcast with my guests and uh, we stream four nights a week playing all sorts of dungeon crawlers lately a little bit of breach um, which is not going to be covered in the podcast tonight but uh, we might be talking about it next week since uh, they have a big tournament this weekend and I kind of want to talk about the aftermath on that Uh, but yeah so first off uh, let's introduce the elusive elite he's a, a third time returnee on the podcast what's up dude Hey everybody, Lucifer here. How, how you uh, been, man? What you been playing? Uh, just been playing a variety of things. Um, well, oh, definitely been playing Division Two beta. And initial thoughts? What are you? Are you, are you still still uh, excited or even more excited? I'm, I'm definitely excited, but I'm also a little wary. Um, I I guess it might just be me, but I think that they changed a good amount from the original Division. And some of them I don't like, some of them I do. It, it's kind of like a 50-50 kind of thing. Okay, cool, cool. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely... Uh, I definitely want to try the, the open beta or whatever that's going on here shortly. So I'll probably play a little bit tomorrow. Uh, I never played Division 1, though. Um, but again, like Destiny, you know, you sequel it, and then it makes it so everyone, everyone can get into it, you know? So I'm all about it. Yeah. Definitely, man. I'd love to see more people playing Division Two. And are you playing it? What 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 uh platform? Oh, I'm probably gonna get it on Xbox, but I'm hopefully I'm hopefully thinking I can get it on PC as well. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I'll probably be on the on the PC side. All right. Um, next up, uh, let's introduce Jer Henning. Uh, Jer is a uh, streamer here on Mixer as well. He's also a digital artist. What's up, Jer? Hey, how's it going, man? Jerry, uh, yeah, doing pretty good, man. Yeah. So, uh, so what have you been, uh, what have you been creating lately? I, I like, I know I've seen the Lego stuff. I really like that recent animation thing you did with the, uh, the ship in the sea. Uh, what's, mm-hmm. uh, what's jumping out at the moment? Like, what are you, what are you working on? Uh, all kinds of stuff. It's sort of a new year and I'm, I'm sort of, uh, kind of rebranding myself and trying to, you know, get as, uh, creative and as, controlled as i can with what i do my art and uh you know sort of learning new techniques new ways to do things and just trying to push myself and hopefully get some game time in here and there you know and then gaming wise uh what have you been playing when you find the time um so a little division two i tried that out this weekend tried anthem what was that a week ago or so and uh i was uh picked up assassin's creed odyssey some small stuff like that you know just having some fun cool cool Awesome. Well, it's awesome to have you, dude. Um, I've been wanting to have you on the podcast for a while, so I'm glad our our schedule just kind of synced tonight. Um, I know I threw this curveball at you, but I totally appreciate you uh, embracing it. You're awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. All right. And finally, we got Kilomes, another uh, returnee on the podcast. How you doing, Kill? Uh, I'm I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? (laughs) Right. I'm good, man. I just forget how my brain works. First. <laughs> what have you? Uh, what have you been playing lately? Um, so other than th- this week, I'm back to regular variety. Uh, the week before was was 30 hours of Kingdom Hearts three. Um, and uh, played some Borderlands two. My randomizer that I've been doing through that. Cool. cool. Played some Breach played uh some overwatch with uh with a good buddy yesterday and uh i'm also gonna end up be playing some smash tomorrow as well as uh some more kingdom hearts yeah you are in a smash tournament tomorrow that's right yeah yeah it'll be <laughs> exciting so there is a I'll smash tournament stomped. 
Yeah, there is a Smash tournament uh, here on Mixer tomorrow. Uh, this podcast probably won't be live by the time that uh, that tournament goes down. But maybe yeah, we'll I talk about it another time and see how see how it went. It's cool to see a Smash community emerging on Mixer. It's, oh, it's I exciting. Agree. I agree, especially with the guys who are pushing it. Like, they're good things can come of it. Good things. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for uh, for making the time to come back, dude. Hey, thanks for having me. I don't know why you keep letting me come back. Herbs <laughs> has tried to warn you about this, but you keep letting it happen. So yeah, it's all good, man. It's all good. Uh, also. Um, throughout the podcast we all, we're live so we have chat as well so if you are in chat um and i don't acknowledge you i, I apologize um but if you say something relevant to the articles uh, that we're covering we'll try to bring in your comments and uh, and talk about them kick them around a bit uh that's just part of the live experience so uh with that let's get into some gaming news um the first bit uh just this title that kind of came out of nowhere um we're talking about apex legends um, I think it wa- launched Monday or Tuesday this past week. Uh, really straight up Dark Horse, just like what happened. And it's a uh, it's a Battle Royale game based on the Titanfall universe. Uh, and it looks a lot like, you know, it's got a little Borderlands feel, feel, feel a little bit of Overwatch, but BR, like it's got a lot of, uh, a lot of potential. Um, the controls feel amazing. Sliding is fantastic. Like I, I like a lot of the things, the components that they're bringing. Uh, another thing that they have that's like, you know, completely uh, different is with the three man three man squad, which I'm pretty sure is a requirement. Is a three man squad. Um, you're able to ping items and ping whether or not there's a weapon here or uh, a bad guy there or whatever. Um, so it definitely increases the team communication. I'm pretty sure every other BR is going to be sniping that feature um so that's cool you get to see other people's take on it and kind of innovation within the space um definitely a breath of fresh air it looks like the entire uh i would say half of mixer was streaming apex legends this week probably Mm. more than half of twitch um so it's definitely getting the uh the eyeballs um have you guys played it and what are your thoughts oh um i haven't had a chance to play it yet because I've been grinding on Division and then playing Division 2 beta, but I'm definitely wanting to try it out because so far, um, like PUBG was okay, never really liked Fortnite, but, um, you know, I'll, I have a saying, uh, where it's like, I'll, I'll try any game at least once. And if I don't like it, then I I won't play it. But, um, you know, I, I at least give it a chance. I don't just immediately write it off. So, hoping to play it maybe sometime this weekend or next week after Division 2 beta's finished. Yeah, there's a lot happening right now, so you gotta kind of choose your time, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I haven't tried it yet. I uh, I don't really play a whole lot of BRs. They never really grab my attention. Um, I do feel, though, that if I'm going to play one, it will probably be this one. Because I appreciate the fact that it is a an FPS game in the sense that it it is what it is it's, it's shooting it's fps it's combat you know I'm, i've never been a big fan of the whole fortnite building aspect and what's going on there so i haven't tried it yet but i'm definitely going to give it a try um yeah awesome kill what are your thoughts man uh it's another battle royale um, which is not your thing right no i i don't i'm not competitive enough to like battle royales it's takes a certain amount of, in my opinion, a certain amount of competitiveness to, like, want to push yourself to get better at them, and I just don't care enough to do such. So, gotcha. um, I think the most fun in a Battle Royale I ever had was PUBG, and we'd run around, but that was when we could run around and kill each other without being scared of getting banned. Um, I, I don't know, I think it's, it's good to challenge Fortnite's authority, uh, because they got a little petty, and they put out a, um, google ad for whenever somebody types in the word apex uh fortnite ad pops up mm-hmm. so that was kind of funny to kind of see that yeah. pettiness pop up because they don't want to <laughs> lose their audience but it's part of the part of the deal oh yeah but <laughs> T- titanfall was a titanfall 2 i i really enjoyed it so if the characters handle how titanfall 2 was uh i would have no problem playing it some uh 
I don't plan on getting it downloaded anytime soon, but if it if the time comes where somebody really wants me to play it, I, I don't think I'd mind trying it out. Mm. Uh, it it yeah. looks like fun, but it's not it's not my cup of tea. Yeah, in this case, it's about who you're playing with, you know. Yeah, gotcha. I feel like it's. Uh, I feel like honestly, what it's done is, in my perspective here, is that I feel like a lot of gamers, a lot of streamers, are. I don't want to say over Fortnite, but I feel like they're getting to the point where they've peaked and they're looking for something different. And a lot of them still play Fortnite because it gets the draw, it gets the audience, it gets yep. the, the viewers, and they want something. They're so hungry for something new. And every mm -hmm. time a new VR comes out, it never quite gets the viewing where this one finally has. So I think a lot of streamers are just happy to have something to sink their teeth into that isn't Fortnite. I think if they're, I, you know. I think the timing's, the timing's perfect for it. Yeah. Like, with with the stuff that's, you know, since with everything going on, with some of the games that are coming out being disappointments or, you know, yeah. everybody else is playing them or they're, you know, they're very single player based or, or whatnot. Those different kind of things, like, this is like perfectly timed because if you look at it, no other giant FPS is coming out right now. Mm -hmm. Um, If we look at Black Ops 4, the big thing about it wasn't necessarily the Battle Royale that was in it. It was everybody was kind of more happy to have the multiplayer and the zombies, at least it, it definitely in my circle of friends, but um, more people cared about the multiplayer than uh, Blackout. So, like, this coming out right now just seems to be perfectly timed to just swoop in and actually make a nice competitive battle royale scene, which will be good to see that happen. Um, and when, uh, so when, I think it will. when streaming Apex, I mean, it is a teen rated game, right? That's another. I think that's another important piece to, to keep in mind. Um, so I'll double check on it real quick. Yeah, please. So the thing is, like, what I'm thinking is, you know, Fortnite's teen, maybe even family friendly. I don't know, um, but it's definitely teen uh, at the most. So when Blackout came out it's with Black teen. Ops, it's teen. Yeah. So when yeah. Blackout came out with Black Ops, a lot of streamers were like, "Oh, cool! I'm gonna go play Blackout," you know, because it's a it's a BR. I'll get some views. And then they realized that their stream was 18 plus. And then it's like, oh, well, maybe I'm not necessarily 18 plus and I want more, more viewership, which is again, why Minecraft gets or got viewership and why Fortnite gets viewership is because the, uh, that category, you know, that's a, that's an important thing. So, yeah. so when Apex comes in as a teen VR, that's not Fortnite. I mean, just sweeps, you know, kind of, kind of smooth move. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I, I think ahead. the big thing is too, is that they finally did it right you know what i mean i mean how often do we see betas or games come out and they're just utterly disgusting like you can't play you want to play you it's broken it's it's buggy it's a mess or it's 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 a half cooked product right yeah probably this is seven actually or a product. eight brs have come out yeah, recently that have just exactly. not been finished yeah right this thing came out and it looks like an absolute polished gem of a game i mean yeah, yeah there's a few issues but nothing like anything we've seen from a lot of recent AAA games. Yeah. You know, and, and it's it's uh, it's pretty impressive, I will say. Even if I don't intend to play the game, you definitely have to admire what they've done in terms of production value. I mean, they've really nailed it. And um, they, they definitely should be proud of that. And I think because it's so stable and well done, it seems, that it's going to really help carry the audience because you're not watching a crappy product. Yep. Absolutely. The uh, so so on in talking with like the other games that are that are coming out. So this article actually it splits Apex and Anthem, talking about the EA portfolio at the moment. So EA was taking a bit of a hit, um, and then it bounced back this week, stock market wise, about twelve percent. You know, which is pretty significant um, because it was getting a lot of flack about Anthem. Um, not quite being what everyone expected. So then everyone's like, mm, I don't know. So investors kind of shaky and then it, it drops. So then apex launches out of nowhere. Everyone's like, well, what is this game? Oh my gosh. EA made this game. What? And then EA stock bounces back up. But the thing is, is Anthem still coming out? So our next couple of articles are about Anthem, but this, this, this article specifically, um, I'll have it all in the show notes. Um, 
it talks about like does this make sense to launch two games this close to each other especially one that was a complete stealth like apex legends anthem has been hyped uh probably for over a year i think it was the uh, was an e3 trailer we saw a long time ago it might have been more than a year i don't know um it was it was E three a couple of years ago, but when they they announced it last year at E three, like the that it was coming out soon. Gotcha. Like it had been like, hey, it's a project, and then last year they're like, hey, twenty nineteen, it's yeah. gonna be coming out. Yeah. So. Yeah. So so, what do you guys think about EA launching two things that are both you know online shooters? You know. I mean, it, I I Anthem it isn't hits, the same as, as Apex by any means, but what do you guys think? I think it hits two completely different audiences because, like, you have people, um, like, I have some, some friends and some viewers who are like, Apex Legends! I love it, it's another Battle Royale, woohoo! And mm -hmm. they were like, you know, you talk to them about their Anthem and they're like, eh. And then you have people like me who I'm like, Anthem, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait for it. It's probably gonna flop and I'm probably gonna hate it within a month, but yeah. And then I have, you know, Apex Legends and everybody's like, oh, kill, what do you think about Apex Legends? And I'm just like, eh, it's another battle royale. I don't really care. So it's, I think it's just the fact of like, they're literally hitting both sides of, of the audiences, you know, they're hitting both sides of the coin with this. And I don't think it's a bad strategy. I just think it's something that you can't, do all the time i think getting away with it once or twice is okay but much more you know if this starts to become a trend with a lot of companies i don't think it's gonna work but in a in a first try i'm not surprised to see ea doing it so gotcha. i think i think it's genius i think that they knew they were suffering flat due to anthem and mm -hmm. they wanted positive press and they're getting it even if this doesn't sell copies of Anthem, it turns the narrative to what was everyone being hyped for Anthem and a large majority of them no longer being hyped for Anthem and giving EA a bad title to all of a sudden nothing but positive press about EA, 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 and people can't believe EA did this and here's an EA game, right? And so I feel like it was genius because Kill hit it on the head. You're, you're targeting two different groups. You're targeting BR people and you're targeting, you know, people who want an FPS game. But the, but besides that, it's making the company as a whole look better. You know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. I kind of feel like they knew what they were doing. And I kind of feel like it was an ace in the hole. And, you know, it's, it's an easy way to make positive light of a negative spin. Because, I mean, people can frame it any way they want. But Anthem is getting tons of bad press. And, uh, you know, I think it was I think it was a positive move on their part, in my opinion. One thing that I see about the uh, about them releasing these two things is just like uh, Kill said that it appeals to two audiences. You know, one, you know, uh, you know, kind of like the Destiny kind of audience, Division kind of audience, and yep. then the FPS audience. Uh, one thing that I also think of FPS, huh? That looter shooter versus FPS. Absolutely, it's two yeah. separate things. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing, the other two audiences I saw was you know. Um, you know, people who are going to pay for a game and people who might not have money to pay for a game, yep. so they'll play something that's free. You know, yep. they if they don't they don't want to invest in a Anthem. You know, there's a new there's a new game on the block and every, and it's the Rage, so you know, and it's free, so might as well play it. Um, and similarly, like oh well, maybe if you know battle royales or FPS aren't their aren't their kind of forte. You know, there's a new game coming out from EA, so they can try that. And I could be wrong. I have not played Apex yet, but I'd assume it's got microtransactions, wouldn't it? Yes. So, and uh, what do you call it? Anthem's going to have microtransactions. And you mean, you mean it's... EA game that doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, they both have microtransactions and Anthem's, you know, you have to pay to get, you know, mm -hmm. into Anthem. So either way... EA is going to be making money, and they're hitting two different uh, audiences at the same time. So, you they're know, just covering all the bases. It, yep. it's, it's a smart plan, and yep. the thing is, like, it is it's genius, but it, it won't work for everybody, and it won't work 
more than once or twice for a company. Right. Um, yeah. It's it's some <laughs> at least in my opinion. Uh but I've been wrong before too, so Well yeah. it, it and not just that, you gotta think about it like this. Not many companies have a game of this caliber and quality just sitting in the hole, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah. this is whether you like BRs or not, you you really can't say it's not a good looking I mean they clearly oh, yeah, no. really it, it looks not, beautiful. You know? Right, um, and I mean I, I just I, from the content You're not a fan. I've watched play it and stuff like that, right. to me, it looks like Good. another Battle Royale. Right, and, and now, see, I'm I know dude. it's not going to play like another Battle Royale, right? right? Like, right. Um, we're talking in chat about how Realm Royale is a completely different type of Battle Royale than PUBG and yeah. Fortnite. Yeah. And I still, you know, it's a class shooter yeah. uh, Battle Royale. Still didn't pull me in because yeah. of the overarching category that it sits in. Yeah. Um, and so, I don't know. No, I'm always skeptical I, about them, though, because I, I agree with you for the fall of the Battle yeah. Royales. I'm not a VR fan either. I agree with you. But I mean, what I'm saying is, like, you definitely have to at least appreciate the, the quality and the product. Like, it's a good product. So w to your note, what you were saying, where not every company can do this is you're right, because a lot of companies don't have a VR just sitting around like this that they can just because I mean, most companies, when they put out a VR, they're crap. I mean, they're not of this caliber. They're not of this quality. They don't really catch the interest of this many people. So, you know, but you're right. They're, they're catering to two different audiences, and I think they're going to try to make everybody happy if they can, you know? Yeah. Not not only not only on the side of, like, oh, well, you know, not everyone has that kind of quality of VR. Not everyone can really, like, take a hit like EA and, like, other big publishers can because some, some studios, it's like, they don't do well on a game. It can either make or break them. And so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. The and, critic life, you know? <laughs> Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, true. True. And so and I think I think funny enough, Apex might actually be like EA's like fallback plan. Because mm. if Anthem doesn't do so well, well they got Apex, so yeah. Well it, and they can look at Fortnite. Clearly you can make a lot of money with a game like this. Oh yeah, I mean it turns I mean, there's... Epic into a studio that can do half of the crap I... that it can do like two yep. years ago. I mean And they yep. Case in point, they've got a proven track record. Fortnite has made yeah. ridiculous amounts of money. And now that they realize they have a BR that can rival Fortnite or even topple it, they're looking at, we could actually turn this into a legitimate thing where, you know, if Anthem fails, great, but we can make a lot of money here. Yeah. Ooh, KSM's got a good asked. question. That's, would it be... I think it could. Would it be able I to kill Fortnite? I... I I think it could kill Fork Knight. I do. I, <laughs> I kind of don't hope it would in a weird twist. So here's the thing, right? Let it not kill Fortnite, so all the toxic kids can stay on it, and then we can have <laughs> Apex. <laughs> no, I, I heard that it several times bad. on Twitter this week. That, like, oh. hey, I noticed, I noticed that um, I started streaming Apex. And I don't have a bunch of bunch of babies in my chat and a bunch of stream snipers. Oh, this is great. You know, like, it didn't even matter how the game played. They were just like, oh, it's an entirely different client base. You know, like... <laughs> oh, I don't have to deal with anybody under the age of 16 right now. Well, and you see, this could be where we start to see separation of BRs. You could start yeah. to see what you're talking about, where, yeah. you know, Fort, Fortnite, or, geez, Fortnite starts to, like, sort of... <laughs> it begins to sort of appeal to that younger generation, where looking at apex it clearly looks like a more i don't want to say adult but it looks like a faster paced more aggressive fps game right where mm -hmm. fortnite just is this like lollipop land sort of shooter it's not really a you know what i mean it's it, it's, it, it's yeah. hard for it's, some it's, people it's, it's to even understand you know, it and take it seriously because of right. the graphics the exactly so, it's where, ages of people because you have like very cartoony right. then you have the slightly yep. realistic yep. and you can even go up even to PUBG, which is very realistic like, right yeah it, yeah, and, and you can spectrum. Yeah, and you can feel the adrenaline when you watch Apex. Like it is a very fast paced game. Like it's a really aggressive game and it and it and I think it, they're looking to sort of almost do like what was that game that failed? Uh that shooter a while back that they were trying to bring up on Steam and it, it went up for like 
what was the one I'm talking about? Mile of Nine, I, Radical Heights. Uh, yeah, some of those. Like, oh, it, yeah. Radical Heights. That was yeah, the you know, it's, it's, I've like, ever enjoyed because of how ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, you know, but I mean, I feel like I feel like Apex. I don't know if it'll kill Fortnite, but I think what we may see is like a huge divide in the community where it, this one catered to this and this one catered to this. I, I think it'll. Um, I, I kind of agree with with that. It, I think it'll kind of turn this thing into like a um. You know how we have our our class shooters, our classic mm-hmm. FPSs, our looter shooters, you know. I think it'll start turning those into a subsection of the battle royales. You know, we'll have right. our, our class yep. battle royales. We'll have yep. our, you know, looter shooter battle royale. You know, not necessarily like that, but I mean, I think it's going to ca- categorize these different things. Um, and you could see you could see that shift, yeah. I, th- yep. I, I could definitely see that happening. You know? Yeah, I'm all about a, a game that can... Uh, continually dethrone Fortnite on on the games streamed or viewers. You know what I'm saying? Like, just if if it yes. just went like on Apex on Tuesdays, Apex was number one and Fortnite was number two, and on Wednesdays, Fortnite was number one and Apex was number two. I'd just feel better with my life. Just you know, yeah. In I general. think having that constant <laughs> that constant uh, competition well, between the two. Yes, like, exactly. I think I'd like to see a battle royale of the battle royale games. Like that'd be beautiful. Who's going to be the last one standing? Yeah, KSM, Lawbreakers is the one I was thinking of. It, what I was trying to say is Lawbreakers, they were going for that really aggressive, fast-paced sort of combat. You remember? It was supposed yeah. to be like really aggressive and fast-paced. That's what I feel when I watch Apex. It has that really aggressive sort of like fast-paced combat, but it just works where Lawbreakers just did not work. It was just clunky, you know? I liked the idea of Lawbreakers. It was a really cool class shooter. That I love the trailer. Like, yeah. Just, oh, it was so neat. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Let's uh let's move on to uh to Anthem guys for a little bit. Um. So a couple things on uh on Anthem. Um. They did they released a little bit about 19 changes that they're changing from the demo to the live game. Just basically taking uh tweets of players complaining about stuff. And then the developers saying, yeah, that's going to be fixed. Yeah, that's going to be fixed. Uh, one of the biggest things is walking around is going to be faster in Fort Tarsus. So that's, that's, that's really funny. Need. That's something. The going to be great. Yeah, we, we, were, we, we were playing it, <laughs> me and Kill, and we we're just like, okay, cool. If this is how slow you're going to walk in the game like uh, at launch, we're not going to play this game. Um, I but, like my uh, feet got glued to the ground. <laughs> um, but yeah, a bunch of little... Uh, little tiny uh quality of life improvements uh, a bunch of bugs that they they went around to squish um easier to see underwater which is also pretty good because that, that was kind of clunky um you'll be able to unlock uh one of the javelins right after the game's tutorial rather rather than a level 10 mission that we had to uh we had to go through a couple of missions before we could unlock something um, so they're gonna let we you get to like level thirteen or something like that. Yeah. So now you can just unlock it right after the tutorial, which is really awesome. A um, little bit of balance changes. Uh, crafting items and materials will not be purchasable for real money um, because people were freaking out about the cash, the cash shop. Um, but it looks like everything is gonna be earnable. So that's again like the difference between free to play and pay to play, and then have microtransactions. It looks like it's just gonna be skins. And uh, and different, you know, uh, cosmetic stuff. That is if they do events, because if they do end up doing like a Christmas event or you know X or Y event, like then it's gonna. Are you gonna be able to earn enough if you play enough, or like what's the you know? Am I gonna have to put in forty hours a week to be able to earn the skins or whatever for that event? You know. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. Because like it's it, it almost scares me in the sense like that Overwatch does with that. Where you have to put in, you know, X amount of time so that way you can get every single piece of, you know. Of yeah, and aesthetic. Overwatch isn't even that punishing. I mean, the loot boxes are punishing, but like 2200 XP or whatever it is to get another level, to get another box, isn't that bad. Yeah. But like other things that EA has done, like um, Battlefront, where it was like... You can grind yeah, four thousand wow. hours before you unlock a certain class or whatever it was. People yeah, were doing the math, and, oh, it, and you rough. know it got downvoted to Reddit Oblivion. Um, but yeah, uh, it looks like there's a lot of a lot of good changes coming there. Um, and I, then they I also oh, go ahead. I think they also have some bad changes coming with that, though. I mean, on the on the if, nineteen if, changes. 
Yeah, if we can look at the very first one of the 19 changes, I think that is a terrible choice. What was it? I think I think an opt-out system for voice chat is terrible. It should always be opt-in, in my opinion. Just being always able to be talk to people in. and yell at people? Well, like, yeah, but I think you should have to <laughs> opt-in to do it. I don't think you should automatically start with your mic going on, because that was the same problem with 76. So I would agree like, with that. Yeah, that was extremely like, oh, I'm frustrating. Talking to other people? Why am yeah. I talking to other people? I don't want to be talking to other people. Yeah. Like, it, it comes down to this. Oh, I think I'm sitting here just relaxing and yelling at these guys. And then next thing I know, they're yelling back at me because my mic was turned on and I had no idea it was turned <laughs> on. Like, that's not yeah. hot mic. Should be an opt in system all the time. <laughs> yeah. That is wrong. I agree um, with that. But it's going to be something I'm going to remember to opt out of the second I install the game onto my computer because yeah. I don't want that in my life. Yep. Um, um, otherwise, the rest of it looks really it looks really good and it looks like stuff that should be in there in the first place. Yeah, um, yeah. Exactly. But there's things like that that just that I, that I can't get behind. I can never get behind an opt out system. I can't. Yeah. So I feel like sort of like Kill said on the opener where it he feels like he's going to regret it a month later. I have felt like that ever since the beta because as, as hyped as I was for Anthem and I really wanted a fun looter shooter to play, I cannot help but feel like it's going to be another destiny two where we're going I, to see. I feel like it's going to be a destiny one. I, uh, yeah, that's I, I, I feel like it. Me. Destiny two yeah. had such a better loss. Yeah. Or such a better like end after it. But Destiny One was just after it, it yeah. crashed and burned. Yeah, and, and that I can't help I but feel such like a that. dirty taste in my mouth after it. Yeah, I can't help but feel like that. I playing the beta, it literally felt like we're gonna get Destiny all over again. It felt too limited good content. to be true. Well, I think we're gonna have limited content. I yeah. feel like people aren't gonna get nearly what they think they're gonna get. I think they're gonna burn through the game in a week, and then you're gonna hear nothing but an uproar about lack of content, lack of things to do. And then you're going to hear the standard, oh, we're working on it, you know, six months down the road. I Now, I, I, I appreciated Anthem because it was beautiful, and I really enjoyed what I spent in it, but I cannot help but feel like it's absolutely going to flop. I, I don't see any way this game doesn't <laughs> flop, and it's $30 yeah. a month later. I, I just I, I, yeah. Don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see years worth of production in this game. I just don't I see it. That's, that's one of the things that scares me in addition to the fact of, I don't want it to turn into Destiny where they did some things yep. with Destiny 2 that they stopped in Destiny 1. Like, yep. I can't go and replay missions in Destiny 2 as easily. Yep. I can't pick a mission and play it. I They they killed a lot of their content. They killed basically speed running for the Destiny 2 community unless you want to make a new character and do a full run. Um, and stuff like that. Like, they, they've taken these certain options and they've removed it. I'm worried that Anthem, like, it felt too good to be true. The last time I felt that good after a beta was Destiny 1. And after watching the crap storm that appeared after Destiny 1 for the next three years, mm -hmm. and, I mean, I guess now five years since it's been out, uh, with some of the stuff that's been going on with Destiny 2, I, I just, it scares me mm -hmm. that... If I enjoy a game during their beta, I'd rather not enjoy their beta because that means that their game might be better. It's long. All right, um, I don't, I don't want to skip over Elite's thoughts, but I also want to get into the next article and then I'll, I'll let Elite go. Is that cool, Elite? Oh, I mean, like, I don't, I really don't have anything to uh, add other than like, I guess. I mean, the only thing that I saw weird about like, uh. You know, like some of the changes that were made from the Anthem beta is like, I know companies always say like, oh, you know, this isn't the final product, but it's like, you know, it seems like to me a little bit, they made a little bit too many changes. Like, I don't know about you, but betas are supposed to be kind of like a view into what it's supposed to be. Yeah, like and a release candidate so much, rather like, than a beta. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, but they're also not doing what... Bethesda did with 76 and letting all these concerns go unwarranted for the first six months of their game's release. Ouch, man. Bringing in Fallout 76. We're all over the place, Kill. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, that's something that's going on right now. You yes, know? You're right, like, you're right. 76 still has bugs from the beta right. that they never fix. 
I and think that it's amazing that at least EA and, and Bioware they're they're trying to get ahead of some of these bugs that the community's reporting. Mm. I at feel least like it's that. a change of pace. Whether it's going to be good or not for the for the release, who knows? But at least it's a change of pace instead of being left on hold for six months. Right. I feel like that's more of a way for them to try and appease people, though. Is what I honestly feel like the that is. Because this happened with, if you remember when Battlefront came out, the same complaints came out when Battlefield was in beta. And people were like, we don't like this, we don't like this, we don't like mm -hmm. that. And they did the same thing. They came out with this big list of, oh, we're going to fix this. Don't worry, the store's not going to be intrusive. Oh, we're going to... And then the game launched and everybody was like, did you even listen to us? Did you even yeah. read a single comment we made? And, and because it's EA, I just... As, as much as I wanted to enjoy the heck out of this game and play it for months, I just I just don't feel it. I think the one redeeming factor that this game has, though, over a lot of them, is mm -hmm. that Bioware is the one that's pulling it for it. Bioware is the one that's developing. Yeah, but a lot yeah. of people Almost say that it. Bioware is is not what it used to be. Like it's people, not, but I mean, they, they still have some of a name. Yes, you know, they have they, a name, they but been completely drugged through the trash, like battle you know battlefront with ea yeah. and everything yeah yeah I just, i'll tell you my okay uh, i was just gonna say that there was several uh several people i've talked to talked to lately that said that a lot of the key players in bioware are are no longer with bioware and the name that that yep. was built on it um it's just similar to blizzard you know yeah uh, people name, people yeah. are leaving you know and yep. like the, yeah there's oh, yeah, a brand the there thing that happened with Bungie yep. too it's a so. shadow yep. yeah shadow yep. what, what it once was so um, I tell you, yeah. I learned my lesson with Destiny 2. I didn't pre-order it because I had a feeling the same thing was going to happen. I didn't buy it on release, right? And I kid you guys not, three weeks after release, I got it on sale for $20. See, yeah. I'm a glutton for punishment, so... They so, gave it away. They gave it away. Yep. Let's go. So here's what I'm going to do with Anthem. I'm going to wait, and when I see it $20 in a month, if I feel like it's worth it at that point, I'll, I'll, I'll throw 20 bucks at it. You know, but mm -hmm. um, I just I just have zero confidence in them. Zero, absolutely zero. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> let, let me let me move into the the next article. It's still Anthem stuff. Uh, they're just talking about um, what the a little bit about the end game, um, which they were really secretive about. The demo just showed, uh, well, the alpha showed a little bit of that initial story. The beta showed um, a little bit of level 10 which i guess is let's say early mid game um and then on sunday last week i don't know if you guys saw but they did a special event um for the end of the demo uh the public demo where they they did some stuff with uh i don't know something was crashing to earth or something like that some some ash titan craziness was going down uh just so people could see a, a snapshot of the world events um but they got a little bit more specific on Endgame. So basically, um, level 30 will be the game's level cap for now. Um, after you hit level 30, you can unlock three new uh, difficulty modes, Grandmaster 1, 2, and 3. Uh, and then the higher you uh, the higher you set that, the higher the drop chance for you know super rares, cosmetics, whatever. Um, and then there's a couple new objective types called Challenges, Contracts, and Strongholds. Uh, contracts are specialized missions you take by talking to NPCs, do the faction rep, stuff like that. Uh, legendary contracts are multi-part missions with bigger rewards, um, kind of like a story raid. And then uh, challenges do uh, coins and crafting materials and strongholds or team required missions with some of the biggest rewards. Um, and then finally, they also have a limited time world event type stuff, which sounds very Destiny-y to me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there's going to be timed world events and some more stuff to do like that. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's the roadmap that they've leaked, which isn't much of a roadmap. <laughs> like you guys see, said. <laughs> and I don't, I don't want people to think I hate the game because I don't. In theory, no, I love it. And, and, and I would kill, I, I hope it succeeds. I really do. Like, I hope this thing comes out and everything you just said is there and they give people a reason to buy it and the game goes on to make a ton of money. I would love to see that. I just, I cannot help but be skeptical, you know? And I don't know. 
I think it's completely fair to be skeptical when you're Absolutely. Right. Yeah. I mean you know, the the biggest thing that I keep comparing this to in my head and and it's not really a fair comparison, but I keep going is it gonna be Borderlands two replayable? Yes. Yeah. Because like, I sit there every time and I I've started Borderlands two more times than I would care to count. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yep. yet, time and time again, I can still come back and do something with it, yep. and make it awesome. Where yep. I've never made it, you know, I've made it to to, to vault to true vault hunter or you know the the vault hunter modes like once, mm-hmm. but because I I just don't care, and sometimes I just don't get to end game. I just start a new file. Um, but I think I worry when I see, oh well, you know, you're at the end game, so we're just gonna make things harder for you. Instead of like, yeah, this yeah. is m- you- this this percent yep. more difficult, and then if you do this, yeah. it's this percent more difficult. Yeah. It's like uh... because the thing is, like, if they have to make it, it has to be able to work, like, and and, and to make the comparison, it has to work like Vault Hunter mode and True Vault Hunter. It has to mm-hmm. work like Borderlands Two because it and it won't. Like that's the thing, it won't because nobody has ever accepted basically like a new game plus mode as well i think in my opinion like I, I i very rarely see people going man this new game plus is so good it added so much time for me to play this game except for when you see people doing the hunt which was going on this week for yeah. saint jude every year they're going back and they're playing through the game three times they're playing through the story three times in a week yep yeah. and then grinding out uh stuff and everything like i don't know i think that's where my biggest problem is and what makes me the most skeptical is i yeah. want it to be uh, like borderlands but nothing's like borderlands because nothing has ever compared to the looter shooter that borderlands is mm. they j- it just has it well see and for me i just give me give me two months worth of good content you know what i mean i would be i'd be okay with that give me a month and i have two months of just good steady a couple hours a day here content you know like mm-hmm. don't make it i feel like three days in i'm going well okay i've hit level 30 and all i'm doing now is maybe getting a better gun but the content i'm running the same dungeon in daily 50th time <laughs> yeah. like where you know uh, give, me, there's, there's... give me two months of casual yeah, like, give me something to feel like okay, you know, casual. Which that's one of the other things that is the worst part about games like this. They get so run into the ground by content creators that are that are professional content creators doing this for their their jobs. Like, I love them. I love them so much. I love watching them. I love watching them enjoy games for years. But with the amount of time they can put in, yeah, you then go and you're like, well, oh, I'm never gonna catch up. I'm never gonna be able to do these things. And so there's a part where. I have yet to see anybody make a balance between casual and professional. Mm. Like, because Destiny 2 and Destiny 1, they failed hard on that. Their Destiny 1 started to become way too catered for casual players to the point where it got boring if you played more than two hours. Yep. And then Destiny 2 went, it's not worth it if I play for two hours and I can't go up but one light level. Like, because these people can go play 10 hours a day and, and actually progress and i can't I, I can't give that much time to so yeah. it's just there there's not there's not a balance of that and yeah. i like i i again i hope the game has it i do yeah I, and that's why that's why i want to buy it on day one because i i really hope that it has that but at the right. same time part of me wants to just like kind of get my money back and then buy ea access for a month or two and then yeah, I just I just bought money. the yeah I just bought the access uh, access premium and when it runs out that's that'll be the extent of my anthem play. <laughs> you know, I thought about doing that because it's only fifteen bucks, right, for a month. Yep. Yep. So basically, get it on the fifteenth when the game launches, and you get a month worth of play, and then at that Maybe point, the game early. Yeah, shoot, I might do that. That's yeah. worth it for fifteen bucks. I mean, yeah, I think that saves me forty five dollars for a game that might flop. Yeah, yeah, I bought it early, so I got into the VIP. So I think I get to play it for like two or three days post launch, which honestly is like probably enough um, to see kind of yeah, where it's going. You'll be able to decide in that time whether you want it or not. Exactly, and, and once we see the the community and see the people who are playing it, see if any any of my you know 
my community's playing it. Um, I'm not going to be able to stream it, but that's a whole separate discussion. Um, I just don't have the don't have the rig for it. Um, but offline, like it's it's been like off stream, it's fantastic. It played wonderful. Right. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh it's promising. But we'll see. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put a, a pre order down or anything. That'd be silly. But 186 or I'm sorry, 168 EA titles for for 15 bucks is not a bad deal. Um, now I feel silly. Why? Because I put down a pre order on Dude, it. Dude, <laughs> put down the pre order. Go ahead and put down the pre order. I'm just no, saying I'm, I'm not gonna. I need to think about like it's it's one of those things of I have a cheaper way to find out if I'm gonna like the game or not. It's not something that is gonna be like if we take Kingdom Hearts three for example. Like I was basically in my brain after watching all the trailers and stuff, I was assured that I was going to have at least twenty hours of a game that I was going to enjoy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I just knew it. I knew I was going to. I've enjoyed every, all but like one of the Kingdom Hearts games that have come out. I knew I was going to enjoy this. So there was no doubt in my mind. The more I think about Anthem, the more I sit there and go, but what if? I I would I would cancel the pre-order and do the premiere thing for 15 that's, bucks. That, I it's think worth that's it. the best option. You I mean, it really 45 is. bucks. Well, yeah, because here, here's the thing, right? What if uh, what if it's it, for 15 bucks? You spend 15 bucks, right? And all of a sudden, it's, you're like, it's a really good game. The community is great. You're having fun with it. Okay. It's yeah. worth the investment at that point, you know? I agree, yep. and and loot boxes I mean, is saying what if what if Warframe existed, right? Yeah, well, right. I'm not gonna lie. I've played Warframe and it never pulled me in. And Jerry's um, played a lot of Warframe. He likes it, right? Where? Yeah, Warf- Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I got a different feel from Anthem than I did from Warframe. I agree with that 100. percent I like I agree it. With that. I like. I heard so many people say it's just Warframe, and I'm like, eh, no, I don't agree. Um, it felt different. The world. Uh, no, I, I didn't agree with that. Yeah. Well, and I agree with that loot box as well, that Warframe is different from when it came out. Um, I, I'm not trying to say that it, it's the same game. I, I've i played it for, you know, since I, I was a senior in college, which was four years ago. You know, I've, I've jumped in and out of playing it multiple times, and I just never could get held to it as well as I'd like to. Hmm. Yeah, Warframe has a lot of content for for someone just now getting into it. That's for sure. And uh, the, the Warframe on Switch, that's an awesome segue. I'm going to go to the next article because um, we're like crunching for time, guys. You guys are great. But uh, let's, let's try to get through a couple more. Um, so Xbox Live is coming to Nintendo Switch, uh, Apple devices, Android, and then probably everything else, maybe PlayStation. No, I'm not, I'm not gonna say that. But uh, but yeah, so that's kind of cool. Um, Xbox Live, kind of. I don't know if you guys remember the E3 uh, show that Microsoft put on, but it seemed like they were getting more and more out of uh, Xbox and getting more and more like, hey, we're everything, you know. So this is just an example of of that uh, that flag that they they put down that day, where they said, hey, we're just gonna buy a bunch of studios and we're just gonna put a bunch of things everywhere and you know mixer and this and blah it's just gonna be like a whole different deal so uh so it's kind of interesting i'm all about xbox live coming to uh my android i like that idea i'm I'm interested in what this even means for ios and android (laughs) because like i already have an xbox live app on my phone um so i don't really get the i mean unless it's supposed to take place of like the game center or something like that yeah i think it'd take it take it yeah it would take over game center and i think it'd take over like google play games that that sort of thing where you have like your own achievements kind of cool but my problem is going to be if i already have an xbox live account um and i didn't i I didn't get to read this one fully through but like if i already have an xbox live account um am i am i gonna have to pay more to keep my phone connected to it or does it get to just piggyback Mm. off my gold already well, it gives because them a reason. I already to... have Xbox Live Gold, so why should I have to buy it again? Oh, because this this would be platinum, and it works on all your devices. You know, uh, it just yeah, costs well, a dollar I mean, more. Well, see, but that's the thing. Like, I don't mind an upgrade <laughs> as long as I'm not paying fourteen dollars for two of my. It's where only it's only ninety nine cents more, kill. It's only ninety nine cents more. What's the big deal? It's a 99 cent you world. Are, you, are, you are missing my point on purpose, sir. 99, 99 cents times, you know, 100 million. 
is a lot of money. No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> like, that's, you're, you're missing the point of what I'm saying. I'm saying, am I going to have to pay double? Not not a dollar more for a, a platinum. Absolutely. Are not. they going to try to make it double? Double. They'll bleed another what dollar out of everybody, though. That's what. I'll, that's all I'm saying. You're not gonna have to pay double. Yeah. Well, that's what. But that's what I'm saying. I'm throwing out there. Like, I hope that they're not gonna try to do that. I hope yeah, that they come out with a, a dollar more plan or you know something like that, versus a oh by the way, uh, yeah you have Xbox Live Gold that only works for one of these things. Good luck. Like. And then they're not coming out with one. Like, that's what I would be worried about. Or wondering, how is it going to transition? Like, are they going to do a platinum? Are they going to... You know, because they basically did away with the silver version of Xbox Live years ago. When yep. the one came out. Um, They slowly phased it out. And so, there really only is Xbox Live Gold. So, are they going to make different tiers that connect to a different amount of uh, services? You know, like... I'm just curious about what are they planning yeah. and how they're going to work to connect with what I already have as an Xbox player. Yeah, let me jump over to uh, Elite. Elite, what you thinking, man? We talked a lot about Anthem stuff, but I want your thoughts on this. Oh, I mean, I, I don't know. It's just, it's so weird. You think like, you know, <laughs> Xbox will stay with, or like, you know, Xbox will stay on Xbox, Switch will stay on Switch, PS4, mm. PS4. And then now that they're bringing like, xbox to the switch it's i don't know it's it's kind of i'm kind of at a loss for words so well it's it's, <laughs> it's crossplay it's crossplay started it right so well that's the other thing they, they said when the switch came out that they were going to be looking to microsoft to borrow what they used yeah they said that they said that years ago when the switch was coming out they're like nintendo's like we're gonna be working with microsoft because they have a good online service like that was something that happened years ago so like for this i was like Man, I've been waiting for this because the servers for Smash are kind of terrible. Kind of? Like, to see Xbox Live come to it? Finally, I've been waiting for this to happen. I don't know. Like, I guess I guess in my mind, it, it would have been like, maybe they would have worked with each other to improve each other's services, not like necessarily bring one service to another. Mm. Yeah. Well, I think that's how we were initially like introduced to it, as it was going to be a, we're going to use their stuff to help improve it, and now it's kind of like that change that you know where yeah. I, I agree i'd love to see it build both of them up um i just knowing knowing both of those companies sometimes i wonder if they're both a little too bullheaded to really compro like compromise with each other to build it better instead of just be like no you just fine i'm not gonna deal with this you just do it yeah yeah we'll see what happens it really it's just plans for now so uh so we can with all the cross play happening um we're, we're starting to see the, the companies kind of bleeding over sony finally allowing things to kind of cross over um but this might this might be like the final straw maybe switch isn't interested in having an xbox logo on their start screen you know um but yeah let's uh let's move on to uh the tech side of news um we had a couple things happen with uh spotify um pretty large company uh, realizing that its biggest threat uh, is Apple's podcasts, which I guess used to be called iTunes podcasts or whatever. Now it's called Apple's podcasts. Um, but uh, but yeah, they they saw that the the iTunes distribution network was you know straight up perfection. So now they're just acquiring companies to try to increase their uh, their level of uh, of access to consumers. Um, we use Anchor to publish this podcast. I know Kill uses Anchor to publish his podcast. Uh, so we're already kind of familiar with this. It's, so it's kind of cool to see this in the news. Um, and Spotify, I, I think Kill will be able to agree with me on this. Spotify has a huge listening platform for both of us, yeah? When we look at our numbers. Um, yeah, Spotify. I, I personally, I'm really glad to see what's going to happen with this. Um, I think the only thing that makes me, I, I feel like I'm really the skeptic today uh but the only thing that would worry me about this would be is if spotify seeing um the competition and trying to cut distribution for, of anchor stuff to itunes um kind of as a no it's supposed to be on our platform not their platform since 
currently Anchor has been independent, it hasn't been a problem. Like you, they're like, hey, we'll put it out anywhere, right? Um, as a distribution service, uh, as um, so I think that would be the only thing that would make me worried is, is Spotify going to change how they are? Are they going to let? Or are they going to help build Anchor up and just make them better versus being like, we're going to make you better, but there's a couple of things that you can't do anymore. So there's the uh, yeah I can see him doing like 24 hours exclusive for that you know like you know like 24 hour exclusives where if you publish a podcast on Anchor it'll go to Spotify first for 24 hours and then it'll go to yeah. iTunes you know I can yeah. see him doing something like that for me on this well, on this podcast that we're doing right now um, once iTunes got unlocked because unlocking iTunes for Anchor to push to it is a complete pain uh, for me as a for, yeah, for me as an Android user, like I don't have i devices, iTunes, I don't care. Uh, so I had to do all kinds of silly things to get Apple to recognize me as a human being, since I'm not really in their ecosystem. Um, they so it took about part of my soul, so that helped out for me. Yeah, it, it took it took about uh, three months to get the podcast on iTunes, and then the second it got on iTunes, it outruns Spotify in four days. So, um, which is pretty impressive. Uh, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Um, I think. Apple's still in the lead, so I, I can Spotify see why, my biggest, I, and I can see why Spotify, Spotify sees it as a threat. You know, um, yeah. it's very very interesting. Um, but yeah, podcasts typically aren't in the news much, but uh, but I like seeing stuff like this. It's like the old internet, you know. Like podcasts are pretty freaking old, and they're still around, and it's just like blogs, I mean, it's, you know. It's like the radio. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, right. it's, it's like so the cool. radio. So. I just, I hope, I hope only good things come from it. I really do. Um, Are you guys got anything on this? Mm. No, it's, no it's not, fine. not a lot from me. No, I, it's something that's sort of a new territory to me. So, okay. Um, all right, let's move on to uh, a little bit of new media news and then we'll hit this board game thing real quick. Uh, so, uh, new media news, we're usually talking about streaming, uh, platforms, stuff like that. Uh, so there is a, uh, a new WoW expansion, you know, a little while ago, um, which means new raids, which means new world for new world first. And, uh, there was a bit of a race as there always is, um, to down the, uh, the final bosses in the world of Warcraft raids. Right. So, uh, typically, you know, um, the world's leading guilds that try to, uh, try to do this first, they don't share their tips with anybody. And they're usually, you know, guild masters prohibit people from streaming their attempts because then people can learn while they're at work. They can be watching a stream and be like, oh, okay, cool. Make sure our tank doesn't do that tonight or whatever, right? Um, but Method actually streamed their entire run um, and got world first. And uh, and it was completely blowing up Twitch, uh, more so than the... Uh, the battle for Azeroth launch. So just, just barely hitting those numbers again, a little bit higher, but, uh, it was pretty cool to see, um, PVE content, which is something we don't really see much on the, on the top of directories anymore. And we see a lot of, you know, if we were talking about earlier, battle Royale is kind of taking over streaming. Um, but to see PVE content completely flip Twitch for a minute and seeing, uh, the, the world's first, like the things that they had to do to get this world first as well. Like, um, for instance, switching all of their uh, races to trolls to get a a percent uh, cold damage, you know, thing where they can run faster if they're chilled. Um, so they all spent twenty five dollars and all flipped their <laughs> their races to trolls. But before that, they ended up clearing out all the auction houses on the server the horde the alliance and the uh the other uh the independent one you know from the goblins like they they cleared out everything and to just to just one lock it down for themselves so they had all the mats in the game at the moment and then completely did everything they could to get the world first it's just always cool to see um what people will do and uh, it's cool to see that twitch was uh was the platform that they were streaming it on uh what are your thoughts guys you guys do some wow ever I don't play WoW, but I think uh, my my connection to this would be like Destiny World First. Absolutely, so like, same deal. Watching those races and always watching those races live is like 
expected for me. So yep. hearing that they were actually like, yeah, let's stream this. I think that's spectacular. I really do. I think that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, it's definitely a, a shift. I mean, they had they had shoutcasters, they had celebrities stopping by, like just all kinds of craziness. Like it was huge, huge, huge. I, I think that's awesome. Uh, just for the fact that they're breaking the mold of the community that's already built and trying to show that it's okay to have fun while also doing this race. Like it doesn't have to be something that's super duper serious. What are your thoughts, Jay? Um, I, I played a lot of WoW back in the day. Uh, played a lot of MMO. I, I quite back in the day. I played MMO for years. Um, it's it's fascinating because this definitely goes against what is mainstream. So it's it's really mm -hmm. interesting to see something like that have the ability to still sort of top the charts like that. You know, I mean, um, yeah, I'm almost fascinated how it even started. Like, I, I, I mean, what what did like a did Twitch sponsor it somehow, or did they just no. sort of start the stream and it just took off? Or yeah, they they had their own communities, um, but uh, wow. but the guild master himself, you know, allowing everyone to stream, you know, yeah, so everyone yeah. Being like, oh wait, you're with Method? Oh my gosh, you guys are going world first? Oh my gosh, and then everyone just you know just realizing kind of what's happening. Wow, I mean, yeah. it's fascinating. I I uh, it, it's it's unique, that's for sure. Like you don't see that a lot anymore with the PVE content because. I mean, the world, we, we sort of shifted in this internet age to everything being, you know, uh, PvP, a lot of BRs and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's fascinating. I don't really play MMOs anymore, but good kudos to them, you know? Mm -hmm. Only they did it on a platform where you could see the multi-stream, so you could do multiple perspectives. I know, right? See different people build and stuff. That'd be, that'd be strange. <laughs> yeah. Only there was something like that that existed. Yeah, you know, something that you where you get, like, maybe a mix of, you know, perspectives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. a mix of it. Oh, dang. Yeah, they... Yeah, guys. But Twitch, it's very Twitch cool has story, live though. streaming now. <laughs> that, doesn't, that, that doesn't mean anything to me. I know. I know. It all started yeah. here. Exactly. <laughs> you guys are funny. All right. Um. And then finally, uh, we're almost at an hour. Cool. Good job, guys. And uh, so finally, we got a an article submitted by the Elusive Elite. Uh, he was talking about a uh, board game company um, called Ninja Division. And Kickstarter. Uh, go ahead, Elusive. Uh, give us the rundown on this one. Okay, so uh, just to summarize it as best as I can, basically this company was like, hey, we're going to, you know, we'd like you guys to help us, uh, you know, fund this uh, these uh, two products that we're making. Um, and one was, I believe, in 2015 or 2016, and then the other one was in 2017. And so far not only have has nobody received anything from the uh from the uh you know campaign uh but you know the the people who are hosting the campaign ninja division have gone basically radio silent so it, you know it it uh it's kind of like one of those things that like we could like proxy a discussion of like you know like early access gameplay and how you know how it is currently because just just like uh just like early access you know with kickstarter you you could invest in something and there's not really like a guarantee that you'll get what you invest into yeah and mm -hmm. to me that's kind of a little concerning because it's like you know is there is there any like reprimands that should be given to people who like don't deliver on what they like promise they get all this money and you know nothing gets sent out or you know, they don't that's kind of called fraud yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly it's, <laughs> it's basically just like a public scam yeah uh and i mean they they could be very much sued for what they've done and have to pay it all back uh, um yeah. maybe but it's but, really tricky those kickstarter clauses yeah, they. <laughs> yeah, if you if you actually look into how many Kickstarters have done this, it's pretty yeah. astounding. Like it is a common thing, and so you feel like that should have, after if it's happened enough times, it should be fixed. Yeah, so I, I feel like much like that, but yeah, Kickstarter's yeah. tried many times to fix this. Okay, guys, like so. Yeah, they have. Yeah. So con concepts, you know, like hey, here's a piece of this concept art. 
This is the game we're gonna make. It's like Diablo 4, only gonna be like 900 times better because it's actually coming, you know? And then everyone's like, oh my gosh, that concept art looks perfect. I'm totally gonna get this. And like, put down $10 and you pre-order uh, the game when it comes out. You're like, oh dude, take my money, take my money, you know? And uh, yeah, so Kickstarter now has like policies on like prototypes. Like a prototype has to actually exist before you can like ask for money. So like, at least they had to have like a playable something like where you were clicking the mouse or pressing buttons and it was killing demons, you know, like that has to happen uh -huh. before they can take money now. Because for a long time, people just came up with game ideas, said, hey, I need a bunch of money. People are like, oh, that sounds like a great idea. And they're like, oh, my gosh, how much is a developer and how much is a uh, is rent in some island nation? And I think I'm just going to go the island nation route. Let's call it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the only thing I have to say is that, like, that seems more like a prerequisite uh, filter. It doesn't really actually like once yeah. that there's like a quote unquote prototype that, yeah. you know, the developers don't run off with the money. Yeah, and then they can still the run off thing, with the prototype and the money. Yeah. Yeah. And then the <laughs> other thing with like what Kill said, where, you know, you can like, you know, someone can sue them for what they do. Uh, you know, lawsuits aren't always, you know, a guarantee to win. And that's also initiative from the customer instead of like, the host website where all this is happening yeah. but also too if you read the kickstarter fine print i'm pretty sure it says in the bottom that you agree into this contract and it basically states that you may or may not get your ever. your uh ever fulfilled it's <laughs> yeah. stated in there it's, so like a chance you're, they you're, definitely you're, have an out yeah Dang and, this does not guarantee you get to, anything yeah, yeah. It's definitely to protect them which yeah, is the, which is the sad part because yeah. it ends up protecting these companies that are scamming. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it was put in place to protect. Like, hey, yeah. Kickstarter did this to me. No, Kickstarter didn't do it. It was the company that did right. it. Right. Like, why Let's are you see. mad at them? Yeah. Yeah, but Kickstarter will never remove it because it protects no. them first. No, yeah, it protects them. And which then, is you know, right. And see, it really sucks because I think the ideas of Kickstarters and GoFundMe is amazing. Because, like, if you take me from a creative standpoint, let's say I wanted to make a really cool art book, right? And I was like, hey, I would love to do this, but, you know, I want to see how much interest there is and see if I can get enough money to actually make this a, a fully funded product that I know people would buy, right? Like, it's beautiful because something like that is really cool that allows someone who would never be able to do that to be able to do that. Yeah. But it's also a system that can be heavily abused in these cases. And it really hurts it for the small people and the people who actually have a really good idea or a really good product that they want to try and get interest in before they have to take the risk, you know? So it's kind of a, it's crummy to see this kind of stuff happen. It really is. Yeah. I, 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 I gotta agree with you because like, you know, you know, like, let's say it, it goes back to what you were saying about how like people might be interested in being able to do something. Uh, you know, if like, for example, if you wanted to make a game, right? You know, you could have a good idea and a few good concepts, but what's the likelihood of you going up to it, uh, like, you know, like uh, a video game developer and saying like, hey, I've got this cool idea for a video game, you know, you, you know, would you be interested in this? And they, and they like flat out reject you like, no, we're good. You know, I mean, that's what Twitter's for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no. And so like, you know, but then you can like pitch this idea to like people on the internet and depending on you know how many people are willing to support it you can get a whole bunch of support the mm -hmm. means to actually make the thing yeah and so you know it in in concept the you know the idea of uh kickstarter and gofundme seems to be like uh, a kickstart of uh you know creativity and you know yep. ability yep. for you know creators to do whatever they want yeah it's just the terms of execution that seem to really muddy the waters and like turn it into yeah. like a pretty, pretty uh, questionable site at sometimes. I think, I think that's the thing for me is uh, Kickstarter and stuff like that. I usually don't go to them. I usually don't go to Kickstarters or GoFundMe. It's like kind of avoid them. Like I, I just like subconsciously avoid them all the time. Mm -hmm. And so the thing, the big thing for me is that like, we were talking about early access game stuff, right? So, like, if I'm getting an early access game, I'm getting it through Steam. Because they're going to give me a product. 
you know, or there's going to be a pre-order from a bigger company like Steam or GameStop that, that I know is going to back the fact that that's going to come out. And so I think the thing for me is I, I'm much more likely to go and want to get something like this from a company than doing it on a Kickstarter. Because I feel like I have, with this being a good example, I have no security of getting the product that I've paid for. Yeah. Or at least if I buy it on Steam for 20 bucks, I'm getting at least $10 worth of game. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is basically investment is what it is. And and I think that's the thing that people have to take away from it. You are essentially the the capital that is making a company's dream become a reality. So you're basically the people sitting at the table that are fronting the money. Yeah. And so people have to understand that when you when you go into these Kickstarters and things like that. Because you're exactly right. It's a little different than EA, an early access game on Steam, because at least the company on, has already presented a product to Steam and they have to sort of go ahead and like give you at least something, even if it's broken, they have to put it there kind of thing. Yeah. But with a Kickstarter though, you're literally funding a dream and you know, it's a risk just like anything, you know, you could, you could throw your money in stocks and it's a risk. It's, you know, it's, there's no guarantees with this stuff. And, and I think that's the big thing people kind of forget at the end of the day is you are kind of doing this knowing you could get burned. And I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's how much you want to support them. And like I said, I've done seven Kickstarters. Uh, well, I mean, I've, I've funded seven and they've all come to fruition for me. So, you well, know, I, I also think there's a part of it where you have to be careful being like the kids that are fresh out of college with your first job. Yes. Yeah. Because those mm -hmm. are the people who are really going to get bunked over. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are the people who are really yeah. going to suffer from this because what's, you know, if you've been established and you you've got your budget and stuff like that, what's twenty bucks here or there for right for for a Kickstarter? Yeah. Um. Versus, I'm fresh out of college. Oh, this game looks awesome. I'm gonna put two hundred dollars down so I can get the Super Founders Edition with my name engraved on it. Yeah. Uh, like I I don't know. Coming out of college, I was a fool with my money. I still there are times where I still am. Yeah. Um. I I think it's just. But. You know, high schoolers and college kids they, they, they just they don't think about that when they're doing some of these things. And I think that's really the scary part, knowing that some of my my old students, as well as current students, could get, you know, bunked over by by something like this. Yeah. And I think the big thing too is the element of humanity. Because yeah. you know, it's 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 a natural thing. You could put anything in this world and someone's gonna find a way to corrupt it. No matter how good you intend it to be, someone's <laughs> going to find a way to abuse the system. And that's just the reality of the world we live in. So I think that Kickstarter, they could make iteration after iteration. And I don't think they'll ever make it completely foolproof. Someone will always find a way to scam people, whether it be, yeah. and I could get into a long list here and I won't. But, you know, there's, there's, people there's are always going to scam people. And that's the unfortunate part of it. There's a lot of beauty in it, but at the same time, it can be abused for really bad things. And, you know, it it kind of sucks, but I think people just have to, you know, I don't know. It's it's a it's a thing, you know. I, you know, I personally like it. I just think you have to be careful, and you got to be selective with what you support, and yeah. try to do your research, and hope you don't get burned. You know. Yeah. Oh, definitely. All right. Anything else, Elite? What are you thinking, man? Thanks for bringing no, the article, dude. I'm. I've already. Oh, I've basically, you know. uh stated all that i want to state and anything that i didn't they did so awesome <laughs> all right well thanks so much guys i think uh we'll we'll wrap it up um can we go around the table real quick and shout out like where you're where you we can find you where listeners can find you guys uh whether that be mixer or twitter or whatever uh we'll start right. with elite <laughs> <laughs> Since yeah, I didn't say got, who got, and everyone's got, like a little quiet, so I'm like, oh, I guess I'll go first. <laughs> Not everybody at once. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm the elusive elite. You can find me over on Mixer.com/slash the elusive elite, and uh, I stream, you know, around three times a week. Mostly play Master Chief Collection and Division, occasionally some other games, but you know, and that's about it. Cool. And uh, Jer? 
Uh, yeah, I'm Jer Henning. Uh, I, I am over on Mixer at mixer.com slash Jer Henning. And I'm a creative streamer. I do a lot of vector and pixel animations and drawings and pretty chill stream and help people learn. And it's just sort of a creative community. So, Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. And Kill? I'm on Twitch, Facebook, and Mixer as Killohms, K-I-L-O-H-M-Z. Uh, I am a Kingdom Hearts and Variety streamer. So if you like Kingdom Hearts or you like the spice of life, which is variety, uh, come say hi. I, my, my chat's usually open. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much for, for being with me today, guys. You guys were awesome. Uh, can we do the streamer shout out? We typically do a streamer shout out each episode, just someone who's not here, um, but someone we kind of want to highlight, typically Mixer, but it, I could be anywhere. I think uh, Kill Ohms has an How idea. How quickly do I have to do this? Uh, you have one minute. Okay, so <laughs> go out, check this dude out. His name's the Naked Panda, TH3 Naked Panda. Dude's amazing, love him so much. Hypest guy I know, memeiest guy I know. He comes up with memes of the month. He makes them his own. He's an 18 plus streamer who loves it. His 2K celebration is going to be spectacular. I can't really talk about it on this stream because of what it is, but it's going to be amazing. Uh, he also is one of my greatest uh, streaming friends ever, and he has literally gone out of his way to make a teen rated mix play board just to play with me and stuff like that. Uh, so I just, I love the dude. He's very supportive. He does amazing things. And to see him grow as he's grown has been amazing. And I just think that we should push some more love on him just because of how awesome of a person he is. Cool. All right. Thanks, man. It looks like he's still alive. So we're probably going to throw a host over at him uh, tonight. Yes, KSM. We will rate him tonight. And uh, if you guys are down for a raid. All right. So with that, um, let me wrap up the podcast. Thanks so much for uh, listening, for your time. Uh, if you're subscribed, you're awesome. Um, if you see this on Twitter and you want to like it or retweet it, that's also appreciated. Uh, if you know someone who's into tech news or you know disagrees with anything we said tonight, um, definitely let them know. And uh, <laughs> and then uh, and then you guys can argue and maybe you can bring them over or uh, or share the podcast with them and and kind of get their opinions out there too. Um, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, you're awesome, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time.